Let's learn how to use ESP programmer for ESP32 and ESP12e microcontroller. The external programmer is useful when programming custom PCB or bare microcontroller chips with minimum circuit. We are using ESP Pro from Capov Embedded. As you can see here we have ESP32 room microcontroller and here we have ESP12e microcontroller. You might have seen this microcontroller ESP32 room and ESP12e on our standard module like ESP32 dev kit and ESP82. 66 node MCU which is quite popular in the market. In this video I'm going to show you how we can use this ESP Pro. It's basically a programmer for ESP series of microcontroller from Kafov Embedded. It's very elegant and beautiful design and it makes your job very easy when it comes to program any of ESP microcontroller. So it simplifies the programming. You don't need to press any button or put some resistor or something around. It will it all will be taken care programming by this ESP programmer. If you look at the back side of this uh, module, you can see there are pin labels given. So you can easily figure out which pin is what so that it makes it very easy to connect. And even if you look at the, the module, this ESP Pro, see every pin has a beautiful labels given. The build quality is awesome for this ESP Pro. If you really want something serious to design your own product or custom PCBs around ESP12e or ESP32 microcontroller, then this ESP programmer ESP Pro really works because it saves your time to program the custom uh, ESP board that you have designed. This module has already uh, this reset and uh, IO0 that's basically a boot button given so we will use this buttons but basically if you choose the bare ESP32 chip you don't even need to have this buttons and you can straight away use because this ESP Pro has a boot and a reset button so again as I said it simplifies the way you program this microcontrollers and we will put up an LED we will connect one external LED which will be a very bare circuit and then you can see how I program this ESP32 chip and and ESP 12e chip using this ESP Pro. Now let's uh, connect this ESP 12e module with ESP Pro and uh, program this ESP 12e module. And you know that there is a built-in LED here that's connected to GPIO2. That's basically uh, IO2, whatever you can call GPIO2. That's what I call. And we will blink this LED. We will program and blink this LED. Uh, by programming using this uh, ESP probe, standard probe. So what we need to do is we need to have a couple of jumper wire as I said. So the first pin is 3.3 volt. So here's the 3.3 volt pin on the ESP probe and I have to connect to this will be a little bit crazy because uh, that's just the setup that I have and uh, here's the VCC pin. So this goes 3.3 volt VCC and then I need to take uh, one more jumper wire so that will connect to the ground so here's the ground this one is the ground and I have to connect to the ground and the ground is on the other side so here's the ground pin so that's how it connects now I need to take one more jumper wire so that's basically for uh, TX so here goes TX and that would connect to the, the TX will go to RX so on the top right corner so here's a rx pin and then i need one more jumper wire so that's basically for rx onto the programmer that i'm going to connect to the tx so here on the top right corner is a tx and then i need to take one more jumper wire so that's basically enable pin that's you can call it as a RTS or so here's a reset pin on the module on the top left corner so then uh, the only thing left is IO0 so this is an IO0 on the ESP Pro and then I have to find where is the GPIO0 so here's the GPIO0 on this side so one, two, three, four. So the fourth pin is GPIO zero, right? So I already have uploaded the code here, but we will uh, reprogram this ESP 12E module and we will change the frequency of blinking this LED. So right now, maybe this LED is blinking with probably uh, one second delay or something like that. So let me just power up. As I said, we need a type C USB cable. So I connect the type C USB cable. And now I hook up to my laptop. 
and here it goes to my laptop before we upload the code onto the esp12 e module we have to install the board support packages for esp8266 so we have to go to file on a top left corner then click on preferences and on the preferences we have this additional board manager url so we have to click on this icon here to add the additional board and here we have to paste this url i have given this link in a video description so you can copy and paste it in your arduino ide so click on ok and then click on ok again and then we have to go to board manager to install the board support packages for esp8266 12e module so either you have to go to tools and select the board and click on board manager so this is one way and the other way is you can see in a top left corner there is this icon when you click on that it opens the board manager so we have to search for esp8266 and you can see now we have esp8266 by community so this is already installed in my case here is the install button you can click on this install button and this board support packages will be installed and then you can able to detect the esp8266 or esp12 e module into your arduino ide so once we are installed you can see it says here installed now we can just click on this icon here and i have this code written here in a setup function we have configured the io2 pin that's gpio2 pins as an output because i have connected LED there and then i turn on the led connect it to io2 pin gpio2 then one second of delay then turn off the led and make the one second of delay and this basically uh, blink the led connected to gpio2 or the io2 pin whatever you call so let's upload this code and see if we can able to blink this led so we have to go to tools and then go to board and now you can see esp8266 shows up and we have to select the board esp12 e module so you can just scroll down and you can see esp12 e module node mcu 1.0 esp12 e module so we have to select that and then we have to go to tools again and then we have to select the board and we have to select the comtain because my esp12 e module is detected as comtain if you're not sure about this then you can quickly go to your device manager and you can check what is a com port assigned to your esp12 e module and on a top left corner we have this upload button so when we click on upload button it probably take few minutes so the upload is started you can see in a lower left corner it says the percentage of upload so once it's done 100 percent it will show you done uploading and even if it says leaving hard reset via rst it's not an issue because this is just confirm that everything is working fine if you don't have any error or something that means everything is fine and now you can see our led is blinking which is connected to io2 pin that's a gpio2 pin on esp12 e module so this is how we will program esp12 e module since we have done with programming esp12 e module let me just remove this module from this bias here and uh, look at the how easy it is to just wrap this ESP12 e module and now to program ESP32 room microcontroller that we have here this module I'm just going to swap this and uh, connect this female header directly to the pins on the ESP32 microcontroller and as I said if you remember this module doesn't have any built-in LED so we have to connect externally but as far as the the programming pin goes we need the six jumper wires only to connect and the LED connection will do later on okay uh, for that we need two more jumper wires but that's fine so let me hook up the socket look at the back side on the back side of this module we have this uh, pin labels so you can easily figure out which pin is what so the first pin is here 3.3 volts so this red wire if you remember so this one is 3.3 volts so i connect it like this for moment i like to keep it uh, like this so it makes it easy for me to see because the connections are really uh, like it's a six pin so uh, recording and then doing at the same time is very difficult so the tx will go to rx and uh, the rx will be this one i hope this is correct and then uh, then we have an rx that goes to tx so this one is a tx so it connects to tx now that's done the next pin is ground this black jumper wire okay and uh, the ground is uh, right next to 3.3 volt 
So the circuit is completed, that's why you might have heard this noise that uh, the USB detects because it's connected over a uh, USB cable to my laptop. So the next pin is uh, enable, that's uh, reset enable, whatever you like to call. And this one is EN pin. On the same corner, the most of the pins, programming pins have kept on our top left corner, so it makes it easy to connect. And uh, then we have uh, IO0 pin. So IO0 pin is this one okay and now the programming connections are done okay now what i said before is that we don't have any built-in led on this esp32 module so we will connect an external led uh, to this module in order to program so i take this led you can see the longer leg of the led is anode and shorter is cathode so i take two jumper wires so let's take this purple for the longer leg of the led and since my favorite pin number is IO2, so I would like to plug it into the IO2. But for that, I have to find <laughs> where is IO2. And uh, that's probably... Because ESP32 has more pins than ESP12E, so sometimes you really need to concentrate and focus like which pin is where. So here's the IO2 pin. And then the another leg of the LED, the shorter leg of the LED, I would going to connect to the ground. So let me hook up this. And this is the ground pin and I need one more ground. So, so I have this ground pin here. Okay. So I have the ground pin. Let me check the connections if they are correct. So basically I found the problem here because uh, we have this ground pin connected wrongly. So here's the ground on the other side. When I plug in, you can see the LED starts blinking, right? And you can see I have written a code which is very simple code which basically set up the IO2 pin. That's a GPIO2 pin. And then in a loop function, I turn on and off the LED which is connected to GPIO2 or IO2 pin, whatever you like to call on ESP. 32 module so before we upload this code and test whether we can able to program this esp32 microcontroller or esp32 room module we have to install the board support packages into the arduino ide so we have to go to file and select the preferences and in preferences we have this additional board manager url so click on this icon here so it will open up the pop-up and you can see here additional board manager url and we have already added the url for esp8266 microcontroller so hit enter and we have to add a few more urls here so if you go to this page i have given this link in a video description so you can copy this stable release link so if we copy this url so click on this icon here to copy and then we have to go to Arduino IDE and then we have to paste this URL. So this basically fetch the board support packages uh, for ESP32 microcontroller and then click on OK and then click on OK again. So what happens is it start downloading the ESP32 board support packages. You can see in a lower left corner it is downloading. So sometimes this works and sometimes this doesn't work. This is basically what I have experienced. So sometimes it's a good practice. So let's say I have added this URL into the preferences and now I go to look at this. It says some indexes could not update it. So this is the problem that I have realized. So if you go to the board manager, so if you go to tools and uh, go to board and then select the board manager and then it opens up here or you can click on this icon here and again the board manager opens up here and if you search ESP32 you can able to see it shows you ESP32 by Espressive system so you can either click this install button and it will install the all the board support packages that you need in order to program this ESP32 room 32 microcontroller so but sometimes for some people this would not show up and uh, for that I read this uh, Arduino forum and it says it has given this one more URL look at this one okay if this doesn't show up then you can copy this URL means one more URL that you copy and then you have to go to file and go to preferences and then click on this icon here additional board manager URL so hit enter and add this 
extra URL. This is only for the people who were not able to see the ESP32 into the board manager, the board manager section. So click on OK and then click on OK. And now you see we already got it. So we don't have to worry. And we have to click on this install button. And you can see in lower right corner now it started uh, downloading all the board support packages uh, for ESP32 microcontroller and all its variants that we need in Arduino IDE. So it will take probably a few minutes. So it still shows some indexes could not update it or something something but it also shows some success or something so it doesn't matter. Now the best way to check whether you have successfully installed ESP32 packages just click on this board manager so this goes away and now we can go to tools and we can go to board and now you see ESP32 shows up and now under ESP32 we can able to select ESP32 dev module or dev kit or whatever you like so I select ESP dev module or this several different ways otherwise you can click here and then you can say select other board port and then here you search ESP32 dev kit or dev module right so let me select ESP32 dev module and then you have to select the COM port where your ESP32 module is detected. If you're not sure about this, you can quickly open device manager and make sure the COM number and uh, you can also use this checkbox and then click on OK and you can see now it says ESP32 dev module. So basically if you go to tools now, you can see the board is already selected as a ESP32 dev module. So you can either select through this option or you can select the COM port through this option, but everything is fine. It's the same thing. So on the top left corner, we have the upload button. So click on upload and this will start uploading the code onto the ESP32 uh, module that we have. But sometime you have to press the IO0 button. That's the boot button. Now you see it started uploading the code and now the code upload is done. If you want to learn more about ESP Programmer and ESP32 or ESP8266, please check the link in the video description and I have shared an awesome resources. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye for now.